This is Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I am here today with a new dyeing experiment. We are going to try to create speckled yarn using McCormick's food coloring. Today as the yarn base, we are going to use Stroll Glimmer, a fingering weight yarn that's made of 70% merino wool, 25% nylon, and 5% selena, which gives it its, this little bit of sparkle. Today I am also going to use a new method to heat the yarn after I've applied the dye. I have here the canning steamer that you set the cans on for my big canning pot. And what we're going to do is apply it to the dye to the yarn while it's on the steamer elevated. So that way we can keep these like small specks of color and know of the dye can pool underneath it. Um, this may not be necessary, but we'll see how much of anything drips through when we move uh, this wire away. And then I will steam heat it on the stovetop. I've let the fiber soak overnight in a water bath that contained 16 cups of water and 3 tablespoons of generic white vinegar. Um, but you don't need to wait overnight, 30 minutes is sufficient to wet the yarn. But for now, I am going to set up the dyes we are going to use for this experiment. I'm feeling thanksgiving -y, so we're going to do like a fall colored palette. In each of these cups right here, I have a quarter cup of water, and I'm going to add some food coloring. One, six drops of red, that one, six drops of yellow, three drops of yellow, five drops of yellow. Okay, so this is going to be an orange with equal parts yellow and red. This is going to be a yellower orange. Whoops. Come on. I'll add one more drop with more red. And then, oops, I forgot. My plan is to do Duke, we'll see if this is going to be more brown or more green, but one drop of red and five drops of green. So to recap, in this one I've got five drops of green and one drop of red. Here I've got two drops of red and five drops of yellow. Equal parts, three drops red, three drops yellow. Then we've got 100% red, and here we've got 100% yellow. I have squeezed out most of the water from the yarn, and now I'm going to add it to this wire and kind of just spread out the fibers as much as I can. I'll probably end up moving it at some point as I'm applying the dye, but uh, yeah, this is a good starting place. So I'm going to use this medicine eyedropper to apply small volumes of dye to the yarn. Since there's already acid from the vinegar located in the yarn, then this should, um, I think, go okay. Um, I'm going to start with the yellow and then work my way to the red. Um, Alright, so the nice thing is that I can add just quick drops of color. Kind of like a random polka dot. I chose a Stilena, the Stilena yarn partly because I've never actually dyed with it before, but also because I was um, 
but I also selected it because I thought that it could be really pretty to have white show through if there's still some sparkle. Now I know I'm probably going to want to go through these layers of yarn a bit. Since I'm not applying very much yarn, anything that is hidden underneath is not getting very much color. Oops, sorry guys, I forgot about the camera angle. All right, so then I've done a bunch of speckled yellow and now let's do the paler orange. Okay, if you leave the yarn too wet before applying the dyes, then um, it can be, there's less space where the fiber can go. This is kind of fun. It's like a paint canvas. Oh man, I'm like both hesitant to move the fiber, but also know at the same time that I need to move. I'm just going to try really hard to not um, squeeze. Maybe I'll reposition the fiber towards the end of speckling. Oops. This is looking pretty cool. So I've never done this before, which is why it is a dyeing experiment. So this is the redder orange, which, I mean, I can tell that it's a tiny bit redder, but I don't know if that's going to read on camera, or if it just looks like some more orange. Okay, so I know so far that there are a couple drops of food coloring on the plate because that's where it's gone through the, uh, the fiber. Let's do some red. So now I'm getting a little more confident with my ability to add slow single drops so you can see I'm moving around a bit faster. I think having a bigger area um, on which to work would not be a good, or would not be a good thing, would not be a bad thing when trying to do the speckled effect. Um, but see, this is looking really cool, but you might think like, oh, when I see speckled yarn, I don't see these clumps of color. But a lot of times after people dye yarn, they will re-skein it, which makes um, where you see the clumps of color not line up perfectly. Okay, let's reposition this. So that way we can, oops, I haven't done the green yet, but I'm not gonna worry about that too much right now. Okay. But this way we can, we don't want to have any huge patches of white. But the thing about this that I'm kind of excited about is that these color repeats are not going to be regular. Which means that there's less of a chance of some weird pooling. Pooling where like you end up with many similar shades of color lining up together to form blotches when it's knit. 
pulling can be really beautiful. And so now that I was with the red, I'm just going to rinse off this um, dropper in my wash water before going back to yellow. Um, pooling can be really beautiful, but sometimes you want to get more random all over color. It would be fun to do this on a pre-knit blank of yarn because then you could have like drops of color that like go randomly um, and you could like start with more yellow drops and it could ooh, you could get a gradient that goes speckled yellow all the way through speckled orange that could be quite beautiful And I have some other ideas for creating speckled yarns that hopefully I'll get a chance to experiment with today. But, oh, I almost forgot. I wanted to start heating up my dye bath, or the steam bath. Um, I've just got a couple cups of water with some salt. And so then the, I mean, the salt water should add more steam. I'm not sure why. I could probably, the chemist in me could probably think about that more, but I remember adding salt to my steamrollers um, as a little girl. So that's my rationale there. I'm gonna have to like hold back. Normally I try so hard to cover up all of the white patches. <laughs> And I'm like, okay, Rebecca, your instinct is to want to cover all the white, but today we want some of the white to stay. Oops. All right. I think that was the darker one. The two oranges ended up not being that different, but that's okay. All right, now let's add some of this green to really, like, make this pop a bit more. And the nice thing is that in some places where the green hits too much orange or brown or yellow, we might get some browns, which would work well for our Thanksgiving -y themed colorway. Now the red that I did is ending up being a bit pink. If I really wanted a true red, it probably would have been best to stick with um, <laughs> food coloring almost directly out of the dropper, which is a great concentrated way to get a lot of color. I think, I don't remember how many, approximately how many drops of food coloring there are in a bottle. Um, but you could easily use up a whole bottle on a skein of yarn. Glad I didn't knock that on the floor. All right, let's reposition again. Oh look, here's another direction that as of yet does not have a lot of color. Yeah, we don't want, we don't really want to have huge, like I want little white patches of color. I don't want huge white patches of color. Probably should have done the green before I flipped it the first time. Oh, I'm sorry you guys. I'm right-handed, but the way I have the camera positioned, that would make it hard for you to see what I am doing. Because yeah, normally I apply dye to yarn, and then I will squeeze it when I'm hand painting to massage the color through the fiber. We're not doing that today. So I'm not sure if you guys who watch this channel but no, don't necessarily read the blog or who haven't gone back to read the entirety that is Chemnitz 
We've been around for, I think, since 2008. But, did that? No, that did not go onto the floor. Um, I started dyeing yarn because I made a sampler fisherman's afghan, to, which is where I learned how to do cables. But then I had all this leftover 80% acrylic, 20% wool yarn. I was like, well, gee, what am I going to do with all this? Because it's like off white, and you know, who, who needs that much off white yarn, right? Well, so then I, was, I looked up and I was like, oh, you can dye with Kool Aid. So I ran to the supermarket, grabbed some Kool Aid, and I guess the rest is history. Because now, as you can see, <laughs> I've been doing a lot of dyeing, and then I even started filming what I was doing. Um, what other questions do I get a lot? Um, okay, so from the story, like you can see that you can dye yarn with, you know, as I've gone as low as 20% wool, but these food coloring based techniques require wool. A silk, some kind of protein based fiber in order to work. Um, and the reason for that is that um, the, it's how the dye bonds to the fiber. This technique does not work well at all on cotton um, or uh, it doesn't work well on cotton and it doesn't work well, uh, it doesn't work at all on, a, on just pure acrylic. It's just something to keep in mind as. As you plan this, because I'll get, sometimes people will be like, this didn't work. I tried this and it didn't work. And I'm like, well, what kind of yarn were you using? So I try to always give some like basics to dyeing when I start one of these videos, but sometimes I forget to remind you that to dye yarn, you need your dye, you need heat, and you need an acid source. And But the yarn also matters, and so most of the time I'm either using on this channel 100% wool, or I think the lowest is like in this yarn where it's 70%. kind of excited by this. These aren't exactly Rebecca colors. Um, I tend to be, oh, it's funny how each time I turn it, I discover large patches that are mostly white. Um, so that is a good note to make sure you keep checking the yarn for white patches. So maybe this was not the best one to start at for um, planning to ste steam on the stove. Anyway, I plan to carry on and to keep adding drops until when I flip it, I no longer find wide white patches. And then I will be back and we'll get ready to steam. So I just wanted to zoom in so you could see. I've moved this around a fair bit, a fair amount now and you can see the drops have separated and already it's looking really pretty and speckled. Um, the colors are pretty pale. Maybe next time I would mix them in an eighth of a cup of water because I still have a lot of dye left over here. But I know right now that I've got a awesome speckled yarn. My pot is nice and steamy. Oops. See, I've got the, well, the water at a rolling boil. I want this this time so I get a lot of good steam. And now I'm going to add the fiber. So it's not submerged. It's over the boiling steaming water. And I'm going to place the lid on. And I, oh, of course this is now fairly boring to look at. 
But I'm now going to let this cook for, I think, 30 minutes. And then I'll come and check on it and see if we think it needs more time. I also wanted to quickly show my work surface. And as you can see, there is very little. The dye didn't leak through. These are places where actually the drip went through the yarn onto the plate. So obviously it means you need to protect your work surface, but it also means that uh, since very little went through, that doing the typical hand painting jelly roll out of plastic wrap could work totally fine for this technique without ending up with a huge splotch of color somewhere. So the 30 minutes are up. And as you can see, we have a lot of steam in the pot. Um, so I think that this has been thoroughly cooked and I am gonna turn off the heat and let this cool down to be room temperature where I will wash it and then let it dry. But look, we have a speckled yarn. Yay! <laughs> the yarn has cooled nicely. And, huh, well, not totally surprisingly, I think it's wetter than I remember, but ooh, look at those specks, guys. Um, since it's totally cool, I will wash with cool water, and then I like to just use some dish soap to remove any remaining color. You want to be careful. Well, this is super washable, so it's not going to felt, but still generally want to be careful. But look at that. Dipping into soapy water and no appreciable color is leaving the yarn. That means that the 30 seconds of steam heating were totally sufficient to set the dye on the yarn. So I'm going to finish washing, hang it up to dry, and we'll be back when I can show you the finished yarn. Here we have the final speckled yarn. I didn't reskein it, so there are still some places where it looks like you've got splotches of color. But really, we've got small specks that are spread out pretty evenly around the fiber. And you can see we've got the little bit of sparkle from the Stellina, which I am particular, particularly excited about. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this dyeing experiment. I really enjoyed creating speckled yarn with you. Thank you for watching. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz.